He's one of my favorite players yet to have a permanent home in Cooperstown. Hoping someone with Hall of Fame voting power is watching, now's a great time to take a closer look at the career of the Cobra, Dave Parker. Drafted right out of high school in the 1970 amateur draft by Pittsburgh, Dave Parker played primarily as a catcher in his youth, but was quickly inserted into the outfield by the Pirates. Though he bounced between class levels in their minor league system, Dave wound up with Gulf Coast League MVP honors in 1970 and won Carolina League Player of the Year in 1972. He was called up to the big leagues in July of 1973, where he hit 288 with four home runs in just 54 games. He spent that season and the next as a platoon outfielder, but shown when given the opportunity to play on an everyday basis. Dave spent 11 seasons with the Pirates, at times alongside Willie Stargell, John Candelaria, and Al Oliver. He joined the franchise as the Bucks were in the middle of a mini dynasty. Many think of the Reds or Dodgers as powerhouses during this time, but the Pirates won the NL Eastern Division six times between 1970 and 1979. A large part of the franchise's success was due to the Cobra, a loud, brash figure in the clubhouse who didn't hesitate to mix words with teammates or coaches. It was the decade of the slugger, and while the American League had Reggie, Burroughs, and the Boog, the National League boasted Winfield, Schmidt, and the Bull. Parker was in that mix, hitting 114 home runs between 1975 and 1979. During that span, he also averaged 308, 23, and 98. He led the league in batting average and slugging percentage twice. He was named the National League's MVP in 1978, though he was not named to the All-Star team that year, as he was on the DL with a fractured cheekbone. An All-Star Game MVP and World Series championship was on the horizon, and Dave became wealthy for his troubles with a multi-year, multi-million dollar contract. Fans lost their excitement in cheering for a baseball player who earned so much while living in a city that was classified as blue collar. It was a bad relationship that stayed with and haunted Parker the rest of his time in Pittsburgh. Coupled with a pending divorce, other legal entanglements, and sore knees, it seemed his star would burn out too soon. Though just as his contract was running out in 1983, he remained healthy, dropped a good amount of weight that had slowed him down, and started hitting like his old self from a decade prior. The free agency waters landed him in his hometown of Cincinnati in 1984 for what was originally a two-year deal. His reinvigorating performance was rewarded with a three-year extension after the 1984 season. He responded to it with a second-place MVP finish in 85. He is also the trivia answer to the first home run derby winner during All-Star Game festivities, smacking six in Minneapolis that year. The dark portion of his playing day's career, and the reason many writers did not give him more consideration in Hall of Fame voting, is the testimony delivered as part of a federal drug trial, which involved several other ballplayers. The story is told with tremendous care and detail in this 2010 book from Aaron Skirball. Parker's admission to using cocaine resulted in a one-year suspension from the game and a portion of his 1986 salary to be contributed to drug abuse programs. With his Reds contract concluding after the 1987 season, a new environment gave Dave another lift as he joined Oakland beginning in 1988. It was an opportune time as his DH production helped the A's to two pennants and a World Series victory in the short time he played there. The four-game sweep against San Francisco would be one of the last major accomplishments in his career. He did pick up his second consecutive Designated Hitter of the Year award in 1990 with Milwaukee. Short stints with the Angels and Blue Jays marked the end of his career following the 1991 campaign, but overall his numbers are impressive. Following his playing days and in between caring for Popeye's chicken franchises, Dave briefly coached for the Angels and Cardinals during the late 1990s. He has also been inducted into the Pirates and Reds Hall of Fame. In 2012, the Cobra, one of the most intimidating and powerful baseball players during his time, was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. He and his wife Kelly started the Dave Parker 39 Foundation. 
the nonprofit aids in families still affected by the disease and their quality of life. In 1997, his first year of Hall of Fame eligibility, Dave received 17.5% of writers' votes. He appeared on 15 total ballots, where he never attained more than 25% in any year, and was dropped from contention after 2011. He has appeared on the contemporary baseball era ballots in 2014, 2018, and 2020, receiving just half of the nods necessary for induction. He'll be on the ballot again in 2025, so let's make it happen, voters. This 1984 Donruss Champions card was signed for me in person at a collectibles show a number of years ago. I was able to meet Mr. Parker a second time so he could sign this 1987 Sporting News Baseball Guide. It's always a special feeling to meet someone who you enjoyed watching perform no matter the profession then realize they're as cool and laid back as you are. My Gemini brother is just that. Here's a different kind of special feeling, acquiring your first ever one of one card. It happens to be autographed as well. This is the 2023 Leaf Vibrance Auto one of one gold shimmer parallel. This card is so new, it's almost too shiny for this channel. There's the stamp on the back. See, I told you it's one of one. Of course it's Leaf, so no logos can be shown but the black and gold colors match well with the Pittsburgh uniform. And it's a cool looking example of his autograph, so it totally works for me. 